In this video, we will discuss two valuable tools for understanding chemistry questions. These are unit analysis and systematic problem solving. Both of these are generally applicable to quantitative problems, but are extremely useful for solving chemistry questions. Unit analysis is a method of arranging problems using the units of given quantities as conversion factors. Using unit analysis to set up problems is important because it is an efficient way to minimize errors in a multi-step calculation. Solving problems with this method provides the units for the final answer and an easy to follow solution. All chemical calculation problems should be solved using unit analysis. To lay out a problem with unit analysis, string together a series of multiplication or division calculations. Include units with every quantity until arriving at the desired set of units for your solution. To make sure your problem is set up correctly, cancel out intermediate units before doing the actual calculation. When you are confident your problem is arranged correctly, calculate your answer. For example, we can easily determine the number of seconds in a week using unit analysis. In this question, start with the known quantity, one week, then multiply by known conversion factors. For example, there are seven days in one week, write the conversion factor as fractions, multiplied together. Even if you think it is unnecessary, problems will grow in complexity and it is easy to mix up a conversion. The conversion factors we need to solve this problem are 7 days in 1 week, 24 hours in 1 day, 60 minutes in 1 hour, and 60 seconds in 1 minute. After we have arranged the calculation, make sure the units cancel. If you need to review fraction multiplication and division, be sure to read through the math review section before continuing. Essentially, since we have set this problem up as a series of fraction multiplications and divisions, the units in the numerators of the fractions are divided by the units in the denominators of the fractions. This means a unit in the numerator of the calculation cancels out if the same unit is in the denominator somewhere in the calculation. In our problem, all of the units cancel out except seconds. Since seconds is our desired answer, we have set the problem up correctly and can continue with our calculation. There are 604,800 seconds in one week. Seconds per week is a straightforward conversion. Let's look at a different question. This question demonstrates that unit analysis is an invaluable tool for solving problems. For example, in a two liter bottle of soda, there are four servings. Each serving is 500 milliliters and there are 200 calories in one serving. How many calories are in a 2 liter bottle of soda? To answer the question, you can easily multiply 4 servings by 200 calories. However, now that we have learned unit analysis, we can set the problem up using units. There is more than one correct method to solve this problem. Either method will yield the desired answer of 800 calories per bottle. The most efficient technique is to multiply four servings per bottle with 200 calories per serving. You could also multiply the conversion factors 2 liters per bottle, 1000 milliliters per liter, and 200 calories per 500 milliliters. This is a relatively simple question, but it highlights that using unit analysis will be an asset to solving problems, especially as calculations become long and intricate. There is one other tool we need to discuss before beginning to tackle chemical calculations, and that is systematic problem solving. There are a number of ways that a problem can be solved. This video presents a general six-step method for solving problems. The first step to problem solving is to identify what is being asked. Read the problem carefully. Visualize what is being asked. Sketch pictures if required. The next step is to identify and organize the given information in the problem. The third step is to identify what information is missing and organize it. Find the constants and data required. List any equations that may be needed. The fourth step is to map out how you are going to solve the problem. What process is required to solve the problem? How do equations need to be manipulated? 
Use unit analysis to organize the solution. In the fifth step, the answer is calculated by following the carefully mapped out solution. Keep track of units and round appropriately using significant figures rules. Finish your calculation by writing a concluding statement. The sixth and final step is to check your answer. Is this a reasonable solution? Make sure the answer to your problem makes numerical and logical sense. Let's apply these steps to a problem. Christopher drives to work and then back home. Round trip, he travels 40 kilometers. Christopher's car gets 12.8 kilometers for every liter of gas. If Christopher drives to work five days a week, how much will it cost him in gas each year? Assuming the price of gas stays at 95 cents a liter, it is not a leap year and Christopher does not take vacation. The problem is asking for the cost of gas paid by Christopher each year. The units for the solution will therefore be dollars per year. What information is provided by the problem? The distance is 40 kilometers per day, and the cost of gas is 95 cents per liter. The amount driven is five days per week, and the efficiency of the car is 12.8 kilometers per liter. What information is missing from the problem? Well, in addition to the given information, we will need the conversion factor that there are 52 weeks per one year. We are now able to arrange a solution. Remember, we are looking for the units dollars per year. So the units of our calculation must work out to dollars in the numerator and year in the denominator. We're now ready to calculate the answer, round to the correct number of significant figures, and write a concluding statement. It costs Christopher $771.90 per year for gas to travel to work. Let's consider this answer. Is it reasonable? $771.90 may seem like a relatively small amount of money to pay for gas for the entire year. However, the distance that Christopher drives to work is not very far. This solution seems reasonable. This concludes our unit analysis and problem solving video. By now, you should be comfortable using unit analysis to solve problems and have a solid approach to problem solving. After watching this video, be sure to complete the chemical math section of the module to practice unit analysis, problem solving, and formula manipulations that you will be required to be successful in completing chemical calculations.